Hey guys, we're here with Tim from Blockhouse Technologies and Todd from Chromaway. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. Very nice, very. Where did you guys hail from? I'm from uh, the Netherlands, actually, from Amsterdam. Yeah, I'm from the U.S., from Washington, D.C. First trip to Dubai, so enjoying it quite a bit. Welcome, and welcome to the Dubai Fintech Summit. Why did you guys choose to come out here? For us, it's a very interesting region, of course. I mean, right now, Blockhouse is active in the Benelux and in the States. But yeah, this is like a territory we don't know yet. So very interesting to be here. Yeah, and as a, as a blockchain project, you know, Dubai has become really one of the centers of the world. So it's, it's almost like you have to be in Dubai, so. Definitely. And so tell me a little bit more about your companies and why you guys are working together. Great. So yeah, Blockhouse is a wide label funding solution. So we work with fund managers, crowdfunding platforms, angel syndicates for them to digitize their processes in uh, fundraising. Yeah. And so, um, you know, Chromeway is a layer one blockchain project, provide uh, decentralized um, asset management and so forth. And uh, actually the reason I'll just, probably the reason we started working with Tim was because he's been doing conventional or issuance and investor management for some of the largest funds in Europe and so forth. And a few years ago, we talked and we saw that the future is going to be right around digital assets. So we wanted to work with a platform like his. And so you're helping him get into the European market or how exactly? <laughs> I mean, actually, it's kind of both ways. I mean, you, Tim is Tim is established in the European market. Actually, Chrome is, is based in Stockholm, our headquarters. So, but it's really, I mean, the digital market, the digital token market is really a global market. So working together on that. How are you guys finding the Middle East markets compared to the other markets? Up until now, uh, like I've been here for a couple of days, but the energy is, is very, uh, yeah, very interesting. I mean, it feels as though, as Todd just said, like a lot of things are happening here and it's happening at a very fast speed. So yeah, it's, it's very cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing. I mean, um, I think like, um, given like the regulatory challenges here in the U.S. Uh, Especially now with the SEC is not a good time. <laughs> so forth that a global company like Chromaways and Blockhouse looking for locations where we can issue assets, where we can have a, um, a receptive regulatory structure because we're mostly working with uh, securities that are highly regulated assets and we want to comply with the law but we want to do it in places which are innovative and so forth. Somewhere where it's like a, a more easy process to work with the government and the regulatory bodies. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the challenges of the U.S. The SEC, for example, hasn't promulgated any rules yet. So that's what the industry is looking for. And in places like Dubai and the UAE and so forth, they've done that. So. All right. And so tell me if you've heard anything on stage today or maybe from just colleagues at the summit, any interesting insights or something that you learned, maybe some takeaways that you can share with us? Yeah, so from my side, I haven't really heard any talks because we have a, we have a booth here. So I was talking a lot with other people about our project. Um, but what I find interesting is that there seems to be a trend here in terms of the type of investors that fund managers want to onboard from these regions. First, it seems as though they were investing their own capital or maybe want to big investors, now they're moving more towards, let's say, multiple investors uh, onboarding them in the fund. So that seems to be a trend uh, here. That's something that I noticed, which is perfectly fine for our project. It, fi it fits well. Yeah, uh, exactly. How do I do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been fun to talk to a much, you know, a number of different projects and so forth. And it's it's been really great to see this real world assets uh, protocol in this industry sort of grow. We're sit talking to a lot of people who are tokenizing art, who are tokenizing commodities. Uh, we're here with our partner who's doing real estate. So you can see the sort of expansion of the industry in a more mature way. Is that something that you're particularly interested in tokenization of assets? We really are. And uh, again, partnering with, um, with Blockhouse because they have the, the platform around KYC and AML, they can do it in a compliant way, and then we can uh, collaborate around the technology, around using blockchain and smart contracts to automate those things and to modify, codify compliance. That makes it, yeah, very exciting. And are there certain uh, projects or particular assets, you said art or real estate maybe, that you guys are focusing on the most? Tim could talk about a couple of projects. 
Yeah, for sure. So like generally speaking, real estate is the largest asset class. I would say 60, 65% of our clients, they are active within the real estate market, both equity, debt, loans, everything. Um, but what we also see, uh, we have a very nice client from the Netherlands. They have a fund for investing in music rights. Yeah, very interesting yeah. model. Yeah, that's really cool. And then we have, of course, let's say more solar panel investing, investing in windmills. So uh, that type of asset classes. Um, and we also service like straightforward private equity and VC type of companies that are investing their capital in companies. So yeah, there's a plethora of asset classes that we uh, service. No, I think he's, I think what Tim said, he just uh, covered it. I mean, again, I think uh, we're seeing like bank lending kind of dry up right now mm -hmm. because of rate rising interest rates and these sort of private, private equity funders are be going to become a larger part of the market in, in real estate and some of these other asset classes. So it becomes like a good timing for us to try to grow this segment. Yeah. Especially given the market conditions, I guess it's a good time for that. <laughs> And what else are you guys uh, looking forward to here in Dubai and just the rest of the year, really, in the space? Uh, so you mean from company perspective or personal? <laughs> it could be both, company or personal. <laughs> I mean, this is literally the first time that we're here as a person, but also as a company trying to find if this is a, actually a space that we want to move towards. But yeah, I mean, their experience has been very good. So um, let's see if uh, the rest of the year, actually, we can uh, find clients and partnerships here that will take us to the next level. So that's the, that's the goal. Yeah, I think the same thing. I mean, both, I think from finding like partners on this platform and so forth, um, um, in different, in different industry segments, innovative partners, but also interestingly, like other vendors who are here, I think like, I think we were talking about like payment providers. So we do work in the U S and Europe now, but, uh, as somebody who's going to issue the, uh, investment product here is maybe want to use a local payment provider in the Gulf and so forth. So we need to be able to build a grow our ecosystem here. So it's another great opportunity to chat with people about that. Right. Maybe to add to that, like indeed on terms of payment service provider, very much agree, but also on the KYC. So yeah, we're now focused on EU and the States, but actually we we're across another booth that was offering KYC services within this region, right? So yeah, it's very nice to find these type of partnerships that uh, can bring us along. All right. Well. Great talking to you guys. Thank you so much for your time. No